Good afternoon. This is, uh, my name is Danny Smith. I'm the sports editor of the Starkville Daily News. And this is Robbie Falk. He is our high school uh, beat writer for the Starkville Daily News. And uh, this is the Digital Express highlighting this week's football games. And of course, uh, Robbie, uh, you know, <laughs> there's really just one game that that's heading above all the rest this week, and it's Starkville West Point. And it's uh, it's always a big game. Uh, no matter what the records are, throw them out the door. And of course, uh, West Point's trying to bounce back from a from a loss, and Starkville bounced back from a, a week one loss. But uh, you know, it's a very important game for both. It is. You know, both both teams are always competing for state championships, whether it be in Class Five A or Class Six A. You know, that used to be. Uh, it seems like a bigger rivalry than it was, just because the two teams were competing for five A. And I think you know, a couple times they played for North State Championship or deep into the playoffs so it's you know it's, it's always been a big time ball game and uh, even though those two teams are two classifications uh, two different classifications they're still right there with each other and, and you know the, you talk to coach Chris Jones and coach uh, Chambliss at West Point I, I talked to coach Chambliss this morning and they understand what that rivalry means to people in this area you know a lot of people from West Point work in Starkville and vice versa. So these people work with each other and they have these allegiances to these teams and uh, this is an opportunity for, for these you know programs to brag about beating the other for, for a full 365 days. So it's a big game and like you said you can throw the records out the window. Both teams are one and one coming in. Both have shown that they can be dominant offensively and defensively. It's just going to be about who the best team is yeah. tomorrow night. And I think the, a point that you made in your preview that'll be in both the Starkville Daily News and the Daily Times Leader on Friday is that these teams respect each other. You know, they play seven on sevens in the summer. Uh, they, you know, they're always around each other. They see each other, and there is a mutual respect there. These, you know, of course they want to win. They want to beat each other, and the communities want want to win the football game. But uh, you know, I don't think there's a hate factor in this in this rivalry. In years past, it probably that element probably has been. But it seems like right now that there's uh, there's a good little camaraderie between the two teams at least. Yeah, I mean, it, you you can compare this to to State and Ole Miss and the fact that you can throw the records out the window and uh, anybody can win this ball game. But there isn't that uh, heated rivalry that you feel in that egg bowl rivalry. This is a this is a rivalry with literally these two teams despise each other for that night. And after that, I mean, both teams have been cheering for the other when they're competing for state championships the last couple of years. Um, they cheer for each other when they, when guys go on to JUCO and, and into, you know, Division One programs. So it, it is a very, very respectable rivalry, and these two teams really do have that brotherhood, kind of camaraderie, friend rivalry between each other. But like I said, on Friday night it's going to be, uh, you know, may the best man win. Yeah. We'll hit on a few other uh, games that are important in the area, and then we'll talk about MSU just a little bit because they have their home opener on Saturday. But uh, Starkville Academy is on the road they, again. They'll play their second straight uh, Mississippi High School Activities Association uh, opponent, Knox Pater. But the team that's looking to go 3-0 and early in the season is, are the East Webster uh, Wolverines. They uh, they host Vardaman, and that's uh, that's a good little border border war with uh, Calhoun County. <laughs> Yeah, and East Webster's kind of been, I don't want to say the surprise team, but uh, they've been the most steady team in the early going. Obviously, the only team left that's undefeated, but it, it has been a bit of a surprise to me to see how they've come out and just taken care of business. Uh, you know, the, it, was, it wasn't the prettiest game against Shaw, but the way that they were able to handle South Pontiac early uh, in the season in the first game was really impressive. And, um, I, you know, you got to think that they're going to be able to do that on Friday night too because I, I think that they're the better team. Uh, and going in that ball game, but like I mentioned in the area preview, that's just a, a team that really needs to have some sustained success. They they need to they need to learn how to win and learn how to handle winning, and so you know beating a team like Vardman coming out and handle business on Friday night is a good step in that direction. Yeah, and I want to mention Eupora just a minute. They they really need a a win in week three to prevent going over three, and they host French Camp and French Camp. You know they. They've struggled a little bit, so I'm sure Yipor, uh looks, looks feels like they can get their first win at home uh, on, on Friday night. <laughs> yeah, Yipor has been kind of banged up, and they're they're real thin on the offensive and defensive line, but they are the better team here. They should win this ball game. If they don't, they're in serious trouble. Uh, another thing I mentioned in the area preview is 
you can't really uh, dictate what French camp is going to be this early in the season. They always seem to get it together when conference play begins. This is kind of their trial period where they kind of figure the kinks out and figure out who they are. So I don't know if you can tell too much about French camp this early, but mm -hmm. you poor certainly needs to win this ball game to, to get ready for region play in a few weeks. Yeah. A lot of teams going on the road. You have Choctaw County at Kansas City, uh, Oak Hill and Hebron, both in Clay County, are, are on the road this week, and they're all uh, looking to about you know that Oak Hill and Hebron are looking to to uh, get their first win of the season. Of course, Choctaw County is looking to uh, bounce back from uh, a loss to Winona, which is you know, what they look pretty good. But uh, let's talk about Mississippi State just a minute. Uh, big weekend for them. They they host Southern Mississippi, and uh, it's uh, you know. Uh, a rivalry that you know they don't play often, but uh, it's uh, you know it's always a good uh, a good 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 game when Southern Miss and, and Mississippi State get together. It is, and this is a this isn't what it used to be in the '80s and '90s when Southern Miss was a little more compatible for Mississippi State. Mississippi State has the better team; they have the better athletes across the board. Mississippi State is an SEC team. Southern Miss is a Conference USA. This is a game that they should win and win handily, but. Southern Miss has a very good defense. They were top five in the country last year, I think, defensively. That's Jay Hobson's deal at Southern Miss. And there's a lot of kids with chips on their shoulder. They didn't get a chance to play for Mississippi State. And they might have been overlooked for an offer. A lot of in-state kids, they got a lot of pride. And Mississippi State has some kids like that with pride as well. But this is going to be a game that Southern Miss comes in thinking that they have nothing to lose. Mississippi State has everything to lose. So, uh, you know, I want to see Mississippi State's defense come out and dominate that ball game and show that they're capable of competing at a high level because last week was, was really rough on that defense. Yeah. And the offense needs to come out and be crisp. If they do that, this is a game that they should win by a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, and, and at times Mississippi State's defense looked okay. You know, of course, they caused and got four turnovers. Uh, was five, but then they ruled the last uh, last play in the game uh, an incomplete pass. So it, it just it ended up being just four turnovers. But still, four turnovers is four turnovers. They need to keep doing that and then limit the the, the yards. Of course, uh, I guess you, you take one and give up the other. But it, it'd be nice to see the uh, they'll be able to shut up, shut down the Golden Eagles and get more turnovers too. But it's 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 going to be interesting to see if Tommy Stevens can carry what he did in the first game to the to the second game, see if he can make some improvements. Uh, it, the really only negative thing that I saw from him was he when he got the blindside hit and fumbled the football, and he missed some reads and he overthrew some passes. But uh, I think uh, I like what I saw from Tommy, and uh, if Colin Hill keeps running like Colin Hill's doing, he may not have to worry about too much. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, the offense looked good, and, uh, and I think a lot of people were really impressed with Tommy Stevens, his ability to have some accuracy on those short passes and even on some deep passes. So. You know, if they keep that up, the offense will be in good shape this year, and then all you got to do is really clean up the defense. It's going to be interesting to really see how everything plays out with this year's team. It's there's a lot of missing dynamics there, but there's there's some opportunity as well. Yeah, it'll be a 2:30 kick in uh, Davis Wade Stadium on Saturday. Uh, we're working on right now, currently working on our game day section. You can get that in Saturday's uh, Strawville Daily News, and it should be a, a, a fun weekend around here for football. So enjoy, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.